Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our first line today is Sir Moses Montefiore, born in 1784 and dies in 1885. Moses Montefiore was a great folk hero for the Jews of Europe and around the world in his day and after he died. Uh, so much so that you find still across the world institutions named after him, for example, the Montefiore home here in Sydney. Now, how did he reach that level of uh, public acclaim and popularity and really reverence for his uh, person and his contribution? It wasn't a very promising start. He was born in Livorno in Italy in 1784, but his family had long-standing connections with London. He went there and he worked as a broker, he worked in finance, although he seems to have gone broke, been the victim of a fraud in the early 19th century, and he had to take a few years to return to work in that particular area. However, he did marry the daughter of Lady Baron Cohen, and another of his daughters married Nathan Mayer Rothschild, the great founder of the Rothschild banking empire. And so he became closely associated with his brother-in-law and became his major broker. And so he managed to make a great fortune by the 1830s when he was still in his 40s. He was able to retire at that stage and dedicate himself wholly to philanthropy and to Jewish leadership. In 1827, he'd taken a visit to the land of Israel and this had changed his life. Previously, he'd not been a particularly religious person or committed to or connected to Judaism. He lived the life of a standard Regency gentleman, uh, able to enjoy all the uh, uh, pursuits and all the diversions of a Regency society, but his visit to the land of Israel uh, turned him on to a more religious mode of life and he became very dedicated to traditional Judaism and to the fate of the Jewish people. He led the Board of Deputies of British Jews for many decades in London and in that capacity he led campaigns to help rescue Jews who were being persecuted or attacked all over the world. He famously went to Damascus in 1840 to help the victims of the Damascus blood libel and there were later trips to uh, Romania, uh, to Morocco, to Russia, to other parts of the world in order to help out Jews who were in need. He was a great philanthropist in the land of Israel. He visited very often for those days to uh, the Holy Land and uh, the windmill, which bears his name in Jerusalem, was his creation. And Yamin Moshe, the neighborhood of, of Jerusalem, is named after him and in his honor. He was a very uh, important figure in British life. He gave very uh, generously to causes around his town of Ramsgate where he chose to live, where he also founded a synagogue which is still there and a rabbinical school, a yeshiva, uh, which uh, was closed down a little time ago. He lived to an enormous age, uh, almost until his 101st uh, birthday, and he was made a baronet, which is a hereditary knighthood by Queen Victoria. When he was at his peak, it was considered too early to give a Jew a peerage, a seat in the House of Lords, but he was honored with a hereditary title of a baronetcy. He died leaving no children. He and his wife Judith couldn't have children, which is a great source of sadness to both of them. And he buried his wife in a mausoleum, which is in Ramsgate as well, which bears a resemblance to the tomb of Rebecca uh, on the way to Bethlehem. He uh, loved and venerated his wife, uh, but they had no children. And so his fortune and his legacy of communal leadership went to his uh, nephews, uh, Montefiores and Sebag Montefiores, who are still involved in Jewish life in Britain and around the world, even today. Thanks for joining.